Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fishery. Today we're talking about shrimp and how to breed them for profit in this day and age. Things have changed, and I've got a lot of tips and tricks that are going to help you out. And also at the end, we're going to add up the math. So how much did it cost to set this up? Literally, what did I use from electricity all the way down to aqua soil and foods? And why do each of those things matter the way I do it? Because I've been breeding shrimp for a decade now. And, you know, other ways of doing this, I make $100 or $200 profit or maybe break even. But this system I have in that little tank behind me in two and a half gallons, I have bred over $1,400 in the last year alone. And with my costs, it's about $1,200 profit out of that $1,400. So let's talk about what you need to get started, my preferences, and all my tips and tricks to hopefully help you out along the way. All right, so I want to talk about this tank in a holistic sense, because when I set this tank up, I knew I wanted it to be a for-profit tank, but I also wanted it to be a nice-looking tank. I wanted it to be a tank that I could enjoy, and I wanted to have as many species as possible in this little tank, and plants invertebrates, and even nanofish. You know, at different points in the year, I even brought little fry, and I'd bring maybe five or six at a time of betta in, and if there weren't a ton of baby shrimp in there uh, that I was worried about, or if the fry were small enough that they couldn't eat the baby shrimp, I would bring them in for a month or maybe two or three weeks and alternate them like musical chairs, but with fish, musical fish style, and let them eat any of the paramecium or planaria or anything in there. Plus, also, they'd add a few nitrates for the plants. Now, when I started the tank, I knew that the nitrates and things would be very low. And I also started this tank without a filter and planning on doing no water changes, just top-offs. So I started with very soft water. You could even go to the store and buy, like, distilled water or something like that. But when I did this... I knew that it would get harder over time. So I also added a product called Aquachar, which is biochar for the garden essentially, but enriched by fish keepers. And actually, I, I should mention, I helped uh, chat with them in designing the, the, the uh, product in the process. There's links to that product in the description if you're interested in it. I do have an affiliate link. But basically, it's enriched with minerals and nutrients for your plants. Uh, and then the carbonates in there will bond with the calcium after your bacteria breaks it down in a few months. And it starts to become bioavailable in the actual microflora and fauna of that aquarium. So the little white seed shrimp or ostracods that you see swimming around on the glass of shrimp tanks and things, uh, those will actually start bioaccumulating whatever has been put into the tank. And so I keep all of this in mind when trying to create these little tanks. And then also instead of filtration, I just used a lotus pod. Now I have a whole video on how I set this up if you want to know more about that in depth. But what I want to talk about in this video more so is how I actually managed to do in a year. So we set it up last October and it's been over a year now it's been uh, now it is march and i wanted to measure from january to january how much i could produce out of this tank and the plants i started with were very low nitrate uh consuming plants i used a a cabamba fricata that turns very red when nitrates are at zero and as they get higher the red starts to go away and it starts to turn to more of a peach or yellow color and that allowed me to not really need to test the water as much. Along with this, I also picked out some ram's horn snails that I thought were nice looking um, that had either pink bodies and gold uh, shells or pink bodies and opalescent shells. And I put them in there to help handle the algae growing on the glass that's a little harder to get that maybe the shrimp wouldn't pick off because they can eat biofilm and they can eat the start of that algae. But unless you have a ton of shrimp in there, they won't keep it completely under control. And so that's why I also introduced originally nearite snails. And that's what most people have access to. But then what I decided to do is add these new snails known as blueberry snails and they are a live birthing snail so they give live birth to a new baby one baby at a time every uh three to five weeks ish and these things are selling for 15 to 20 dollars a piece so in my breakdown that we're going to go over of how much money i've made in the last year 
I'm actually being really conservative uh, just in case I'm overlooking costs like oh, maybe you want to have a filter on the tank. Maybe you want to um, buy more plants that cost you money whereas I had plant cuttings and clippings. So I've actually made more money off this tank if you count the betta that I grew up as baby little teeny fry while they were still just eating micro, uh, you know, infusoria and little uh, creatures in the tank once it was cycled and basically keeping away any sort of hydra or planaria from the shrimp. But you might want to use something like no planaria, uh, which is a, the product I'd recommend if you get planaria because planaria and scuds will destroy a shrimp colony very quickly. So that's my warning is definitely don't let those take hold. If you've got scuds, definitely get a fish in there to eat them. If there aren't a ton of baby shrimp at that point, if there are a bunch of baby shrimp manually, you're going to try to remove all the scuds possible or maybe buy one of those little scud traps. Um, you know, it's up to you. But I wanted to go over a couple other indicators that I like to use that maybe you haven't thought about always in the aquarium. And, you know, things like how much algae is growing can tell you things about your nitrates and phosphates. But the shell health of how uh, your shrimp are molting, how translucent the sheds are, the exoskeletons are, if they're getting stuck in their exoskeletons, those can tell you things like if they're getting stuck that maybe there wasn't enough uh, calcium in the water or in their diet. And because of that, they got stuck and they got the white line of death or the ring of death, which basically just means they couldn't get out. Their shell was too elastic or stretchy and sticky and they couldn't pull out through the shoulder and they got squished from the outside in, unfortunately. And all of this can be avoided by diet. So that brings me to my next two uh, expenditures, but I think they're really, really worth it. Uh, and one is substrate in that bright well substrate will keep your water. Uh, if you're using soft water to begin with, it will keep your minerality right where you want to be uh, when you use soft water. You can add a little bit of crushed coral if it's not quite hard enough uh, when you're dialing in your KH and GH. And like I said, you can use that aquachar and carbon also to help later on get that broken down. Plus, it will absorb any toxins or medications you put in the tank later. Uh, also, you know, I'm not counting on any of those little fish to spawn or anything, but what happens is when you keep little fish like these uh, axel radii, uh, these little danionellas or, or um, sunda danios, when you keep these little micro or nano fish in the aquarium, inevitably on all of the greenery that grows in this uh, environment, they will scatter eggs. And while they usually eat them, when you move them out, if there's a bunch of baby shrimp and you're thinking, um, there may be a chance that they could eat some of those newborn babies and I don't want to risk it. It's a little labor intensive to be, you know, doing that, that hands on, but I think it is worth it because I actually ended up with some brand new fry, which then I moved to another little container and raised those up, uh, which in theory could have been more money, but they just went into my fish room. Now, the main expenditure on this tank is really the tank and the light and the substrate. Those are going to be the physical expenditures, and then it's up to you on the shrimp. But I started originally with uh, 10 shrimp that were uh, female and five that were male, all really good quality. And I actually bought what's called a breeder pack from Aquatic Arts. Uh, again, I have a fil an affiliate link, and basically this tank was built by all the sponsors of all the brands that I like, uh, and trying to see if I could make money off of, you know, the things they advertise, and I did. I made a total of $1,400 when all was said and done, and so this tank, I got up and running with that starter kit, which came with, it came with some botanicals, some leaves and things that I put in there for biofilm. It came with three different foods, which honestly would have been enough food for the year for the shrimp, uh, besides the babies. Now, because there are babies and I was trying to raise the max amount possible, I also bought a product known as Bacter AE, and Bacter AE is for your uh, baby shrimp, but also the adult shrimp, but what it is is it's uh, amino acids and alkaloids and things that encourage biofilm to grow. So basically bacteria and fungi and archaea that are uh, microscopic that make that kind of slimy texture in your aquarium on the glass or on leaves and help break those things down, shrimp love eating that. Not necessarily eating the leaf itself or eating algae itself, but actually the proteins and things that grow on it as these layers and films. 
uh, known as Aufux sometimes as well. I have a whole video on that if you're interested in how all that works as well too. I actually started with only 10 shrimp at, uh, at the low point and I produced over 240 shrimp now and I've sold 185 of them and getting to the part where you sell them you got to sell them at a retail price you don't want to be selling them wholesale if you're going to make any money now wholesale you're only going to sell them for you know a dollar or two whereas if you can sell them to a fish club to other fish keepers online uh, facebook groups or whatever however you want to do it um you can generally ask for whatever you bought the shrimp for because if you were willing to pay it they should be and you know you've got a, a quality shrimp there now i use neocaridinas and i only charge six dollars even though the ones i bought tend to go for seven or eight because they're the highest quality yellow neocaridina line in the u.s now i like aquatic arts but there's also uh shrimp envy there's also garden of eater uh shrimp and so there's lots of places you can get shrimp, but I recommend getting shrimp from your local area or from the United States at least so that they are acclimated to our waters and aren't so sensitive. The shrimp in the hobby that have made it to the U.S. do so much better than the ones that have to go from Asia to Europe to, um, you know, Florida and a holding tank and then they go to a local uh, store it's just it's very stressful on them and you have far less luck with them okay so to the actual breakdown and cost of everything uh, I want to mention that it's very worthwhile to also buy quality foods now aquatic arts in that breeder pack they do give you food and enough for a year they give you pollen granules and uh, little snowflakes which are like soy husks and then some pellets but I really really like feeding shrimp envy uh, the owners are friends of mine also. They used to be in Oregon and now they're down in the south of the U.S. But they are making a product that literally has no additives, no preservatives. So you're not getting the phosphate levels rising, which cause your algae to spike. And especially in a tank where you're not doing a bunch of water changes or filter stuff. That's important. You know, keeping that eco ecosystem is important. And in this tank, I the, the nitrates that did build up ended up going straight to the floating plants that I added red root floaters and uh, water lettuce, duckweed, whatever it was. Uh, you know, I always had a good buffer of plants in there, both for surface area, but also for selling. I, I would take little portions, you know, once you've got red root floaters all over the top of that tank, take two thirds of it, sell that portion at your local fish auction for five or 10 bucks. Um, you know, so let's go over what I actually sold here and what I actually invested in the tank. So what I sold in this last year, and I'm not counting any of the little fish or uh, some of the ram's horn snails and stuff, but the blueberry snails, some Bucephalandra and Anubius, as well as some moss and Sawasser tang that I sold, I got about $5 a portion, and I sold about 10 of the moss, about 4 of the Sawasser tang, and about 3 of the Bucephalandra, which I sold those for 15 you know, altogether, I made over $150 there. Then the snails, I was able to get $15 each for, and I sold six of the babies that had grown up to mid or juvenile size, and I kept the rest. I'm still breeding them out, because the other trick to a colony that you're breeding for profit is you want to have like 20 or 30, maybe even 40 shrimp, so that you've always got multiple females having babies and always got babies growing out. Now, they will kind of hit a limit, but in this tank, at one point, I had 100 shrimp living in there and three nano fish and dozens of snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, ram's horn snails, nearites, and blueberry snails, and they all did great, and the nitrates stayed at right about zero or 10 parts per million. Now, the big money came from the 185 shrimp I sold for $6 a piece. Sometimes you could do a package deal, sell them for five a piece, you know, whatever. You do it how you want, but don't un don't oversell your colony ever. Uh, so all of that together, including the Aquasoil, which I recommend Brightwell brand, uh, the minerals in that are good, but you could use Fluval Stratum or something like that, but you definitely want one that buffers the water and keeps your KH and GH where you want it to be. Um, and then the light was a $15 light at Home Depot. If you get a light like that, Literally, just make sure that it is a 6,500 Kelvin, 6,500 Kelvin light, which is the warmth. It's kind of like a blue sky day. And then the wattage was 16 watts. It only cost me $2.52 
all year to run 10 hours a day. And manually, I do have to turn it off and on every day. But uh, that's a small price to pay for me. Uh, I like interacting with my tanks. But you could put it on a timer too, I suppose, at the plug. But you want that and the, the intensity. Just get a floodlight LED for outside and just put that on top of the tank and you got a waterproof light on top of the tank super strong you can even grow carpeting plants with that so that's the other thing with the aqua soil having the good aqua soil you can then do that and you can even sell portions of that or moss or whatever it is you want to sell and if you have a big base population of shrimp for your colony then you can also create more waste same with the fish that are in there and create enough nitrates and minerals and nutrients that are going to be in the quality food that you are then able to grow enough plants to be selling those and making money. So that's why I really do like the Shrimp Envy brand. Uh, when you look at the ingredients, there are no preservatives, so you're not creeping up in those other levels. And they're really well-rounded for Caradina or Neo Caradina. They've got different formulations. You can get the sampler pack. But altogether add it up it is not bad to spend two even if you spent three hundred dollars setting this up with you know the ultimate uh package sort of deal uh to be making fourteen hundred dollars a year is pretty incredible and so i just wanted to break that down for you now that it's been over a year and that i've kept track of it and all and uh there's links in the description to discounts on any of the products or brands that i uh used Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your tips and tricks about breeding fish or shrimp in a small space. Your little indicator tricks for when you know the water chemistry is off or how you make a couple extra bucks out of the space you're working with. All of that kind of stuff is so invaluable to the community at large. And I rely on you guys to supply so much of that info and i learned so much from you as well so i really do appreciate that and i appreciate your time and you guys just being here and hanging out with me checking out what i have to say today thanks and i will see you guys next time take care my friends goodbye